Okay, let's get started. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. My name is Tim Begonis. I'm the CMO here at DTools. With me is Seth Enos, Product Manager for System Integrator. And we're gonna be showing today uh, what's new in System Integrator version 13, uh, update one. So a little housekeeping. Um, if you've done a webinar with us uh, before, uh, then this is old news. But for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, uh, we will be uh, presenting a, a slideshow and then we will be covering some new features in the software. Uh, we do have a questions pane uh, that you can use in your control panel to ask questions. Uh, we will be saving time at the end to go through questions. Um, we will also attempt to answer questions uh, during the presentation. If you ask a question during the presentation and don't receive an answer, we will cover that question at the end of the presentation. And then you have a little arrow in the upper right-hand side of your control panel. Uh, you can use that to enlarge the viewing screen so you can see the presentation. Okay, a bit about what we'll cover today. Uh, we will be reviewing some of the new features and enhancements in the latest update to System Integrator version 13. Uh, Seth will be doing a demonstration of these new enhancements. Uh, as I mentioned, we will be doing Q&A, and this webinar will be recorded and distributed to all attendees after the presentation. For those of you who may not be familiar with our solution, um, our product system integrator is a data-driven solution that really streamlines uh, your major project workflow, um, all the way from sales and estimation, through system design and documentation, and project management, back office, and services. What happens in our solution is, information product specifications are used to drive all operations within the software everything from manufacturer model number description images uh, pricing and labor time can be created to build a bill of materials uh, organized by location organized by system organized by phase and everything in that bill of materials is then available to generate uh, client documentation such as proposals, contracts, scope of work, et cetera. Um, and then that same information is available to generate engineering drawings via our integration with AutoCAD and with Microsoft Visio. So the data in the bill of materials is then being generated to create line diagrams, uh, to show simple signal flow, plan views, so you can bring floor plans in, add devices to the floor plan, and every symbol that shows up on the drawing is actually tied to product data. We also have dimensions and specifications, so you can generate uh, elevation drawings to scale. And we also track inputs and outputs so that you can generate very detailed schematic drawings from these drawings, you can then generate other installation documentation, such as wire checklists, wire schedules, and even generate wire labels for the entire job. The same information that is used for the documentation and the drawings can then be leveraged for project management. One of the things that we track very well is install time. And because we're organizing information either by phase or by system or by location, that information can be used to then generate uh, work orders, service orders, and install tasks. Um, we also have a full change order process so that you can track project changes throughout the project. Uh, we can generate purchase orders and send those purchase orders directly to your vendors. We have very robust project reporting. And then we integrate with other back-end systems such as accounting systems, ERP systems. So we have a full end-to-end -end solution that really helps integrators manage their project workflow. We have also some web applications and mobile apps Mobile Quote is our scope and budget application, and that is a Mac iOS application that really helps at the beginning of the sales process 
to uh, get to a very detailed scope and budget. That information can then be brought into System Integrator to generate the rest of your documentation. And we have our mobile install web app, which allows you to schedule work orders and service orders to your field technicians and manage the project through to completion. So one of the key features that we're going to be showing in the latest update to System Integrator is our ability to enable integrators to generate AV as a service as part of their new business process. We have an integration with Great American Financial, which enables integrators now to take advantage of this new business structure. Uh, audio video as a service really enables integrators to now offer bundles of projects and service plans and the benefits to this help customers understand that they can pay for their AV uh, in, in a, uh, a manageable monthly structure um, which really changes the business structure from large upfront expenditures um, to a manageable monthly cost. This is good for both the integrator and the end customer um, and our integration with Great America Financing enables our users to be able to get competitive finance options and bundle in the cost of the full project with multiple year service plans and then provide a single monthly payment for their end clients. And we're gonna demonstrate that today. So some of the benefits of AV as a service um, to the integrators, since this is an alternative business model, um, this helps create recurring revenue streams. So sales through AV as a service can be recognized as recurring revenue. Uh, this is great and not only in terms of monthly cash flow, but it also increases the value of the integrator business uh, to be able to recognize that revenue as recurring revenue. Um, it really helps automatically bundle in service contracts as part of your project, uh, guaranteeing that you will get these service contract revenues. Um, managing things in a monthly manageable payment for your clients can help reduce the sales cycle. Um, and instead of the customer focusing on a very large number, can help you improve your close rates as they can shift their focus to a, a manageable expense as opposed to a capital expenditure. And this really helps you as the integrator uh, build these long-term client relationships, all which add to the value of your business. For end clients, this really, on the accounting side and management side, uh, converts these large projects from a capital expenditure to an operating expense. Um, this helps in terms of cash flow management, um, as well as uh, changes the way these projects may be accounted for on their books, um, and that, that may benefit them as well. It reduces the risk of uh, technology obsolescence, mainly because part of what's being bundled in are regular updates to technology and service. So having the most up-to-date products and technology combined with regular scheduled services um, also helps reduce the risk of downtime and it gives end clients a manageable expense uh, for their technology projects and it really helps integrators build the enterprise value of their business. So we'll be demonstrating that and then we will also be demonstrating some of the other new capabilities of the solution. Um, we will be demonstrating payment processing so that you'll be able to uh, enable your clients to pay a down payment or pay uh, payments of the project through our integration with ProPay. Uh, this will be available through our customer portal so that when you're presenting a proposal or you're presenting a change order, you can also uh, facilitate credit card payments. Uh, we have a couple of new uh, wire shapes uh, in Visio that Seth will be demonstrating. One is a multi-conductor shape, which enables pinout terminations uh, in, on schematic drawings. 
Uh, and the other is a new wire estimation shape, which allows you to really go on a floor plan and then predict and measure out uh, wire runs, which is a, a feature that's been requested for a very long time and we're excited uh, to bring that to market. Uh, and the ability to push allowance items to QuickBooks. And really that's, that's a feature that uh, enables us to help with inventory tracking. Uh, and there's so much more in this update, but I'm gonna turn it over to Seth and let him uh, demonstrate these new capabilities. All right, thanks, Tim. Let me go ahead and close out of here. We'll go over to this. So hopefully everyone can see my screen here. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm gonna go through those features that Tim just spoke of. Um, I'll put a few more in there as I see them as we go through here. Um, now, um, as some of you are, aware we we recently released uh v13 and um i think it was a few months ago <laughs> you know so it's, it wasn't that long ago um and uh this uh update really uh we've had we've had one minor client update uh you know a server update now this will be the second client update uh, technically um but this one actually has features in it not just bug fixes you know we usually after release um in the first you know month or so get gather up as many bugs as we can that our users find and get that out. So this one has, um, you know, some bug fixes in it, but it's also features that we didn't get um, into the initial release of V13. So we continued to work on those and we wanted to push those out for you um, before the end of the year. And, and here we are with this release and this update. So um, I'm going to talk to you first about um, the uh, AV as a service, which is essentially our great America integration. Um, so a little bit about that. So if you go to your control panel here, um, this is uh, the Great America option here. Now, um, I'm not going to open that right now because all it is is where you enter your key, and I do have a test key I don't want to make public. Uh, but I'll just take you out here just so you guys know. Uh, this is our documentation site. You can link to this all throughout the software. Um, these are the release notes. You know, here's the little entry for today's date uh, for our features and bugs here uh, with links to the documentation. So uh, just to so you know, that's all that's on this Great America uh, function here is you enable it, you put your key in, once you've signed up with them, hit OK, and that's all you have to do. Uh, I'm going to actually demonstrate the, the, the great features of this, but that's how you set it up. That's what is shown here. Um, and I'll probably, I'll be back here to reference this again in a few. <laughs> so um, anyways, that's where it sits here under your control panel. So let's go ahead and get into that. Uh, I'm gonna move over here to projects, manage projects, and I'll select this project. This one happens to have a service plan associated with it. Um, and again, um, as Tim uh, mentioned, you know, Great America is a uh, financing company uh, for, um, mostly low voltage integrators. Um, the AV as a service comes into play when you are bundling in a service plan. You know, so you're gonna be guaranteed this revenue, um, again, as, as Tim went through. So that's why I, I do have a service plan associated with this particular um, project that I'm gonna demonstrate this for. And it's really all in the reporting is where you're going to see this. So if I go to reports and I choose to run a client report here, um, so if I move down in this list here, we'll just say we're going to run a proposal with images. Uh, it's one of my favorites there. We'll say we want it to run it by location. Um, if you'll notice down here, you have options here. Now, um, include service plans and report. That's been there since the V13 release. That's when service plans were introduced. But you'll notice beneath this now, uh, there's include Great America financing options as well. So I'm going to want to do both of these because I want to treat this as an AV as a service example. So I'll need a service plan in here. And I'm also going to need this Great American option. So let's go ahead and select the service plan, which is the only one I created here <laughs> for this example. So now that that's associated, we'll go ahead and run the reporting for this. What this is doing is it's now looking out at Great American getting our rate card. So um, I only have one option in here. Of course, I have a test account. Your rate cards will be whatever you set up with Great America. Um, so what we're looking here at here, uh, as you can see here, you are able to add points. It's a Great America thing uh, if you'd like to here, and, and the math will work based on your points. But what we're showing you is the uh, project total here without taxes. 
And again, it was a great American requirement to not include taxes in this total that here's going to be financed. Uh, you'll see that there's a minimum amount and a maximum amount, amount listed. And because I've chosen to include a service plan here, uh, this section displays where uh, you have the option there. And then we just show you the additional monthly fees. And that is um, a caveat or a requirement of these service plans. You need to have monthly service plan items in there, not the yearly or the quarterly ones for this to work. Because uh, essentially, I mean, that's the payments or the financing that's going through is going to be monthly. So we need to match up with that. Um, and as I mentioned, your rate cards, however many you have, will list here. Uh, hopefully not too, too many. I don't know how many of you guys are going to set up on your accounts. Um, my understanding is there's usually one or two out here, um, according to. Uh, you know, talking to uh, Great America. Then over here, these will absolutely vary, these numbers, based on what you set up through Great America. So you choose a contract type or multiple. We say we can offer both of these. Now here, the number down is, is how many payments do you want down? And we're just using their terminology. Um, again, it could be, in this case, I only have the option on my examples here, but one or two payments down. Um, and then what term? Uh, how many? How long is this going to be for? For you know, two years, three years, four years, um, and you can give as many options as you want here. Now, um, according to Great America, best practice is to offer one or two options, not too many more than that, when you're when you're offering a leasing or financing terms here. Um, so I'm going to run the example with more than that. <laughs> Just I'm going to check those three options. We're not going to do a five year option here, and we're going to calculate this number. And um, this is returning the values here for this particular contract type, my three options for 24 months, 36, 48 months, then this one for those options. Um, and as you can see, if I had had a number down option of one, <laughs> this list would be doubled. All of those would be in here. We are only going to allow you to select a maximum of four here. Uh, to show up on the report. You have four options. And again, Great uh, America suggests two as best practice. We doubled that and said, well, I know our clients are going to want more than two sometimes. So uh, we doubled it to four. Um, but what you'll go through here, Ed, you'll, you'll check these. Yeah, I'm going to display this option and this option. I've decided after I see the numbers, that's what I want to present to my clients. Um, now, if you want to do four, go ahead. Just say, okay, we're, we'll Maybe we'll do that for our example, why not? Um, what I do wanna point out here, um, just so you know, and this is all done through Great America and, and the way the math will work here. Based on your options here, they take this number, they do their math and they come up with a monthly number based off of this. Then at the end, they add on whatever this monthly is, just so you're aware of that. This just gets tacked on on top of whatever number there is. So this number here includes this 7498. It just gets rolled into that number. Um, well, this looks like a nice monthly payment. Um, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to choose select that, uh, those four options, and this is going to run the report. And, and I might want to mention very quickly while that report's running that Great America, once you go this option, uh, is responsible for collecting payment from the customer. So they will collect payment from the end client and pass on uh service plan uh billing directly to the integrator great 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 all right let me open this up let me go to the end here um i'm scrolling up just a little bit so you can see i did choose to include the service plan on this so that that's what displays for a service plan um hopefully you guys already know that that are using this feature it's been out um again for a few months and, and we have another whole video out there on this this is the new part here where we're going to list the payment options, just uh, some text here, and then option one through four, because you saw me choose four of them. Uh, this will only list um, how many you want, and we just break it down by this price for this many months with no advance payment. And if there was one down payment, uh, the text would reflect that. Um, you know, in my sample there, I didn't have it. Uh, in earlier testing, we did. Um, so it's all built to uh, basically spit out this information here for payment options. Now. Um, we try to make this as easy as possible for you um, and not force you to customize reports to, to change this text here. So I do want to point out to you that there are report settings where you can change all of this text. So we've got this header text, this text here, and then the wording here for options one through four. 
Um, you may not want to call it option one. You might want to call it something else. So just so you see where that is, uh, under your report settings, there's a little Great America tab here, and there's where you can change that text and then what you call these options. So um, that's what you can do on this. And um, now, of course, you could change this as needed on the fly if you're presenting oddly to one particular client and it needs to be worded a certain way. Um, just come out here, change those, run the report, come back, and you can change them back. But uh, these are your your local machine settings for running those reports. And so um, that is our uh, Great America integration. And again, as you can see, this can certainly be used uh, for that a uh, AV as a service. Um, even if you're not using service plans, you can still finance projects through there. So, um, all right. Seth, before we move on, yes. Seth, before we move on, since we're on this topic, we do have a, a few questions about specifically the AV as a service. Um, so let's let's take some of those questions now before we move on. Okay. Okay. Um, so the first question here is, does the Great America link need to be active to see that checkbox when running the report? Yes, yes, that's not going to appear unless you've, uh, under the control panel, entered a key, a valid key, and, and you're linked over to them. So. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, if Do I enter a 12K annual service contract as 12K or thousands? Do we put the actual number in? It depends on how you want to create your items. Uh, the, the, actually, in that case, you would uh, the service plan items need to be billed monthly um, or set up as a monthly payment. So in that case, you'd take the lower number there. You're going to need to set it up for uh, X amount of time um, times a monthly amount. That's what's going to work with the Great American Integration since their payments will be monthly. Okay, so you're not going to you're not going to use an abbreviation and say, "Okay, you need to put the actual right. numbers." Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how much would Great America charge for their services to the integrator? Um. <laughs> I believe that, that is, well, I believe that their service, they're a finance company. So um, they offer rates uh, for financing. Um, and so depending on um, what the rates are, um, I believe that Great America is uh, charging through the interest rates. Um, that is a question that, that I believe you can um, ask Great America Financing as part of the application process. Um, can I create a report that does not show the capital expenditure cost, only the monthly payment? Um, the capital expenditure, I'm sorry. Um, so that would probably be the project total. The project that, total, of course, yes, absolutely. There's a built-in report designer in our software. You can customize any of our reports. Terrific. Um, can the option names be relabeled? Um, from that one dialogue you showed, it said option one, option two, option three. Yes. Can they be relabeled re to a more client-friendly? Um, yes, and that was shown here under the report settings. Option one through four, rename them to whatever you'd like. Terrific. Thank you. I believe those are all the questions for now about AV. Oh, there's, a, there's a few more. Sorry. Um, what happens if a client doesn't qualify due to credit? Um, if a client, I mean, that that is going to be a rejection on the uh, Great America side. They, when, you, when you present these options to uh, them, and actually it's, it's uh, it'll come down to your relationship with Great America, your account as well. Obviously, they're going to be financing you up front, uh, but I'm sure there are checks in place on their side. Um, it's kind of excluding us. It's a better question for Great America than with Tools. Okay. Um, if you already have a leasing company, can you create a rate key so that you can generate the same report but not use Great America financing? Um, I mean, look, yeah, it, maybe you can play around with custom fields and things like that, but obviously th there's not an integration <laughs> to your financing company. So um, the most I can say is maybe if you customize our software a bit with custom fields and custom reports, you could pull off something similar. Got it. Uh, does DTools have plans to open the AV as a service platform to other financial institutions besides Great America? Uh, I can answer that one. This is Tim. Uh, yes, we are investigating other options besides uh, Great America. Um, oh, I have a nice comment. Well done. Great. Um, thank you. 
Um, if the project is financed with no tax and there is no first payment, how do we collect the tax? I'm sorry, that again, um, that is a great question on how you collect it since we don't collect or store money inside of SI or even invoice through it. Um, again, that, that is something that you can work out with Great America on exactly how this is handled. Um, it was very specific though when we were integrating that they said the price that shows there, the price that gets financed, is uh, exclusive of tax. Okay, thank you. Um, once the loan amount is paid, how is the service monthly payment handled? Does Great America continue to receive payment and send to the integrator, or do we have to change the payment plan? I, I do believe that this is all set up on, on when you create your Great America account. Everyone can now go uh, check out their website after this and, and possibly talk with someone there um, to um, understand how this is going to get set up through them. But some some options out there are when you do go through them, you're going to get all of the money up front for this project. Um, they're going to then bill the clients directly. They're paying Great America at that point. And, you know, if there are service plan items in there that are monthly fees, you will get, uh, it's either those that there's options, I believe, to get that all up front if it's a two year term on these services or uh, receive monthly payments on the services. But the project itself, since they are a financing company, you're receiving that up front. Uh, your clients then are paying directly through Great America. All right, terrific. All right, um, thanks. I know we have a couple more questions. We'll try and get to those at the end. Uh, thanks, everyone. So let's move on to the the next feature set. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, no problem. So the the next feature set we're going to talk about here uh, in this webinar will be the uh, the ability to uh, accept a, a down payment, the initial payment on a project uh, via our customer portal. Um, that's where we designed this to work, uh, and that's how it works now. Um, so where you set this up, and again, I'm not going to show you exactly, um, open this up, but under company information, there's your customer portal tab. Uh, at the very bottom of that tab is where you're going to see the information. Oh, my company information went away. Um, but underneath the customer portal there, you will see the, um, the way to enable Propay. And again, you're going to have to have an account with Propay. Go to their website, check them out, see if you want to go through this, but they are... Um, you know, a financial processing company. They're able to uh, accept payments. So um, the way we do it is through customer portal. So you enable it through there. And again, I have no problem showing you just out to our documentation, company information. Let's just move down here. Uh, customer portal. And if there's the ProPay integration, just again, at the bottom here, click this. There's some setup out there in your, um, your side, the, the dealer side of customer portal for setting your propay. It's either create a new one or link an existing one, and then you fill out all of your information and enter. But anyways, that's this. I just, again, have a test key. I don't want to make public because um, I can't blur it out during this <laughs> webinar. I can in the recording, but not now. Um, so I'm set up here for this. So uh, if we go, uh, in fact, give me one second here. I think I pulled this over there we go there we go all right so let's go to projects uh manage projects and we'll take we'll do this one um actually we'll probably just do the same one here customer portal we're going to share documents here uh, first thing i'm going to do is make sure i put in my test email here So that's going to go to that one as I'm, this would be the client view here. This is me as the SI user email. Um, so we've added a few options out here as well. Uh, just like you saw in the other reporting, um, this included service plan. This was not a part of our initial B13 release. So yeah, in order to share documents to customer portal that included service plan information, um, you had to first, you know, run the report PDF, it then attaches a file versus running the report on the fly here. Uh, we added this when we added um, this Great America option. Just so you're aware of that, I just wanted to point that out. Um, but so when you are set up to uh, be a uh, ProPay user, when you add your documents or reports, let's go ahead and here and add a report. I'm also going to do the you know, proposal with images by location, add and close. I'm going to skip adding this information, so we just demonstrated this um, elsewhere. But here, 
down here, we've added a new setting that you'll only see if you have registered through ProPay in our software. Request payment through ProPay. If you click that, you're going to then choose your payment settings. And so what this is going to show you here um, is uh, requesting a payment for just the, uh, the rough in part of this. So we'll take the first um, line item in your payment terms, which you know you have per project, the contract terms. Um, essentially your payment schedule. We throw that up here at the top and it just shows that number. You can use a project total or you can just enter an amount here. Now you have to be aware of your limits as a ProPay user. And again, call or, or get in contact with them for all of the details on this. Um, but uh, initially when uh, it just, you know, your average Joe signs up with ProPay, the limit I believe is around $5,000 per transaction. Um, and it could be X amount of transactions per month are all that are permitted. It's all through your setup with them. Um, once you provide them um, like a DNA sample, I think some stem cells they want to, they'll, they'll increase your limit uh, out here on how much you can ask for. So again, that's every one of our users is going to set up your and, and have your own relationship with Propay on how much you can actually put in um, and request for a, a single payment here. Um, I, again, I don't have those details on what each person's doing because it's just so many combinations. Talk to them about increasing that $5,000 limit. Uh, so for the sake of this, I'm going to stay right below that. I want, and hold on, dot .99. See, see, it's not 5,000. It's, it's just right under. Um, now you can also add a description here that your clients will see in the customer portal when they're accepting the document. Um, and you can save this as the default description here anytime. Anytime you change this, you can do that just so you don't have to retype it if you have some standard text that you want to say. However, if you want to customize it for a particular client, that's what this is for. Just type in whatever you want there. Um, this is my default from previous time. So let me hit save. Um, and share this document. I'm not going to add a message to the email. I'm not demonstrating customer portal today. So I'll skip all that, even though my emails are going to get sent out. And documents have been shared. So, so far, I mean, the, the big difference obviously was requesting a payment and choosing that payment. So now let's go look what your clients will see out in the customer portal. So if I pull up this, let's go here. I'm going to refresh this. And so here's the one that I just published out here. Um, this the document on this, this card. If I click it, um, again, if you don't have the ProPay set up, you won't have the option to request a payment. This will just still say accept. If you are set up, it says accept and pay. Uh, only on the documents, mind you, that you've requested a payment for. Um, you'll still have the option not to request a payment, even if you are a ProPay user. And say, nope, not requesting on this particular job. But in this case, uh, when you do have, this is again what your client sees out here. Here's the, the presentation of what you're giving them. And they look at this and um, no back and forth, they want to accept right away. So when you say accept and pay, it pulls this up. This is looks a, just a little bit different than before we added some stuff up here. Uh, the amount that is requested here, and there's that description I showed you earlier where you can save it as a default or customize it per user. Uh, they still have their signature lines here, so this is all we added right now. And then obviously this button says accept and pay versus just accept, there's my signature. Um, hit accept and pay. And now this takes you uh, through our uh, customer portal still, but now this is linking out to ProPay. We are not storing any of your information out here. Um, I know that question is going to come up. No, we don't. <laughs> this is all through ProPay. Uh, check or credit card are the options out here. Now the user could still accept this without payment should they choose to do that. Even though you requested a payment, they may not um, go with that. So we didn't lock them into this. They can still accept the job. And then obviously that's going <laughs> to require a phone call or so, uh, an argument on the phone. Um, but like, if I want to put a payment through for this, let me put in a fake number here. Y'all don't try to buy stuff with this number. It doesn't work. Let me go here. Um, go December. I think this is nine, nine, nine. I think that's what I am supposed to do here. All right, fingers crossed, this should go through. <laughs> as long as I typed in my fake information properly <laughs> um, for my test account, I'm gonna hit submit. It wants to save my fake visa, no thanks. All right, that went through. 
And so this is going to show, or at least it was submitted, uh, a payment of this was made by credit card. That's what it shows here. It will also show that back here on the card itself. I'm filtered when you go back, if you guys know, it filters to that job. So there it is. Um, it'll also show that back in SI. So that's all information that comes back down. If we come here and we go to share documents, which is for that job here, uh, this document has received a payment of that amount on this date by this credit card. It's also, of course, printed up here, but we like to show that here. And that's really the ProPay integration here. So you are now able to request a payment from your clients, know your limits through ProPay on uh, what you can ask. Uh, you saw the uh, default there. Now you can also, um, you can also have other documents out here where you don't require or request a payment through. You could say on this proposal, but I'm also going to show you, uh, say, the scope of work or other things. Not every document is going to force you to ask for a payment. It's just an option when you go to publish here now. So, um, okay, so there, there's that feature there. Um, I am going to move on. Look, I'm looking at our time here. I know uh, we did, we stopped for questions earlier, but I'm going to try to get through very quickly these two new uh, Visio shapes dealing with wires and wire connections. Um, real quickly, though, a minor little thing I, I'd like to show, set up control panel. This was a request that came in um, just about uh, order status for products inside of a project. Um, as you guys may know, uh, when you create a project and you add a bunch of items to it, the default status is nothing, which we love the word unassigned for. So um, it doesn't default to say not ordered or not in stock. It just says unassigned. Um, if you would like to change this now, when items are added to an SI product, set the order status of them to whatever you want. As you know, this list is customizable. You can add to this and delete, and you may change this to your language. Um, whatever not ordered means in, in your language. Uh, so we let you pick from here. <laughs> what, whatever you have here, what do you want it to be when it goes into a project? Um, hopefully that will save you guys a little bit of time of having to go through and update everything to not ordered before you order it. Um, little minor thing though, but I wanted to show an enhancement that uh, we try to squeeze on little things here and there besides major features of these releases. Um, in addition to, of course, uh, the occasional bug fix. We really, we really don't have that many bugs as you guys know. So. Um, all right, moving ahead, Visio. So let's go here. I'm just going to pull up a, a drawing here. I've got a floor plan sitting out here. Um, for this one, I'm going to move over to this schematic page. So here, this is a finish wire, as we call it. I think you guys know that. Um, and just in case you didn't, uh, there are different ends to this wire. This is the from end, which is a head end generally. That's where it's coming from. And the head end, of course, can be whatever you name it. It's a generally attached to some device, but sometimes when you're pulling wires, it's just that equipment closet. Pull it down to that rack and terminate later. But the from head end to the location where the other device is, whatever it is. Um, just so you know, <laughs> I just want to point that out, the from and the two ends of this, if you didn't know that. Um, so what we did is we added a new shape that I'll show you shortly for wire uh, length calculations, and then we enhanced our existing finish wire shape. So you're going to need to download new stencils for this. Uh, when you are in Visio shapes tab here, which shows all the, these stencils, this is the, this called our stencil tree. Here under manage stencils, there is a download option. If you click that, you're going to see that there's an updated stencil for wires uh, shapes, this one wire shapes. So, um, and depending on when the last time you did that, you may see other updates like me. <laughs> I haven't updated in a while for these shapes. We've made some enhancements. I don't have those locally. I could download them if I wanted to. Uh, but you guys will definitely want to download the new wire shapes one that you're going to see out here. That will go down to your local machine. Uh, each user will have to do that unless you want to share your export and import here, and then users can import those the next time uh, they open Visio. So let's talk about this enhancement. So the first enhancement that we made to this finished wire shape here, or, or the enhancement to this, is going to be um, adding the ability to display a pinout uh, legend, if you will. We called it legends. Um, I'm sure we'll get some feedback on terminology. Um, but as everyone here hopefully knows that are doing drawings here that are still hanging out in the webinar that care about the drawings, um, when this item here, this is one end of a wire, and we attach it to one point on a um, schematic shape. There's just one point, you know, I'll just pull over a schematic shape. 
well, I don't know what this thing is. Let's see. It doesn't have IOs, of course, because I just randomly chose something. Um, let's pull this over here. This one at least has something on it over here. Um, but my point being is we only attach to one point. We don't let you take the end of this wire and split it out. We originally started looking at maybe figuring out a way to do that. Um, and um, it adopted the nickname internally very quickly of the that ugly spider wire. Uh, with all these little legs coming off it and uh, really confusing on a drawing <laughs> to make all these connections to our nice vertical shape here, which has inputs and outputs and you're attaching this. So um, what we've done, again, given you the option to do is like this wire here may have multiple smaller wires inside of it, or if we call this a cable, inside of that sheath, there are uh, other, uh, the terminology we guys were bouncing between here, is other wires slash conductors. That's what's in here. I think you, everyone here on this phone call knows exactly what I'm talking about, whether you call them wires or conductors, but uh, even, a, you know, let's just, cat six, simple example there, there's a lot of conductors or smaller wires in that bundle. Um, we did not, um, we, so what we're giving you the option to do is show um, on a, either the same page or another page a pinout legend. So let's do that. Um, Right-click the shape. You go to D-Tools, pinout legends down here at the bottom. Now there's three options here. Um, I don't know how many of you can actually read these right now, <laughs> the way you're viewing, but it says link from wire connection to pinout, link to wire connection pinout or convert pinout to a master shape. That's if you want to save one that you've created to be able to reuse over and over again on future jobs. Probably a good idea. <laughs> so you don't have to do this every single time. Um, so I just mentioned earlier, there's a from end and a to end of this wire. Um, that The reason I mentioned that is that so you know which end you're doing. Uh, I'm going to do the to end. So it shows up right here on the end I'm focused in on. That is the to end of the wire. So if you do this, it's going to open up this little dialog here or form. Uh, I can add this, my pinout shape to an existing page or a new page. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to call it pinout details. I can spell details. Uh, now, we do make you pick a type of page. That's in case you end up dropping other uh, products over there and, and uh, Visio shapes, I should say. And this will determine what Visio shapes drop there. Um, I would probably treat this as its own standalone page, personally. But whatever, uh, you still have to pick one of these. So I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna say it's a schematic. <laughs> uh, now, you can either create a brand new shape here, or you can use a custom shape if you save these, that convert pinout shape to master that I showed you, that right click option, that's what it does. And I'll demonstrate that shortly. Now, the reason existing shape here is grayed out is it's only looking at existing shapes in this particular uh, project. So you may have done one of these, not saved it as a master, but I'm gonna link that to 20 more wires. You know, I don't need a pinout for every single thing. Like This is how this attaches to this thermostat. Well, there's 50 of those thermostats in this job. I only need one reference for that, but up on the end of each wire, I may wanna show, okay, these are the wires that this pinout legend applies to. So uh, this will be, if I do another example here, showing I could use an existing shape, but not yet. Um, we do make you give this shape a name. Um, we are going to automatically label it as well. It's going to get an automatic label, but you're going to have to give it a name. Um, X, Y, Z controller is going to be my example. And I'm going to say there are um, six wires, five wires. Since I, well, I haven't hit five. <laughs> I'll do five wires on this or five conductors. I need, that's what I want to show is really happening at the end of this wire. As, um, and again, a lot of you may have already figured out, maybe you're thinking terminal blocks. Maybe that's, that's what I'm doing here. It's a Phoenix connector, something like that, but I wanna show the details. So what I'll do is I'll hit create in this case. So what just happened is down here, pinout details, the page was created. A shape was dropped there by pinout details with my five wires. And then we added a call out here to the end of this wire, the two end of the wire. This pinout-001 is the, the unique ID that is automatically created here for this the first one in this job, and pinout details is the name of the page that I created. So that way, um, now this is a hyperlink. I can hold control down and click this and go over and find that pinout detail. But when you print these, obviously you can't do that. So uh, hence the little reference here. Uh, go to that page, that's the, the ID you're looking for on that page, and that should explain to you how to, um, again, separate out these this, this pin out details. Um, this can be moved around a bit, just so you see, I, I drag it over to the side if you want to. Um, it does have the hyperlink, but I'll just point out, this is what dropped on this page. This is the shape that was created. I told it to give me five wires. It listened to me. Now, 
before I forget, I'm going to move the shape. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because if I do create another one in this demo, it's going to lay right on top of this one. We've put everything in the middle of the page. <laughs> so let me grab this really quickly and move it out of the way so the next one doesn't overlap. it. But if you take a look here, what we've given you is five wires. This is what I asked for. Um, it shows that, that unique code there um, that I mentioned before, and then my name, the XYZ controller. Now, there's really two parts to this shape. There's like this outer shell, which is the container for them all. And then there's the individual wires in here. Now, when you have the, the outer shell selected, you won't see a specific shape. So let me zoom in so y'all can see these little points. So there, to do that, you just click down here. So this little white area and you click, uh, click the whole thing. Shape data, um, if you don't have this window showing, um, everyone, you should know how to do that. View, task panes, shape data. It's really useful with all of our shapes, not just this one. Uh, really, really useful. Uh, so anyways, if you're not showing the shape data, you're gonna probably wanna do that. But right here, the reference ID, if I don't like pin out 001, I can change that name here. I can choose not to even show it if I don't want to. Um, then there's a start index here one through five, and then you can also step this up if it's gonna be all odd numbers or something like that. You do two and now it goes to one, three, five, seven, nine. Um, some little options we gave you, okay? Um, cool options, mind you. Um, so there's this. Now you may want to um, customize each wire here a little bit to, to really tell what it does. So when you have a wire selected, and as you can see, I'll zoom in, see now the individual wire here is selected. Um, you can do things. To it. I can change the name from wire to heat. The code is H. Um, it's not a space, I'll show you that in a second. And it, do I want it in all caps? Sure. Um, then while I'm here, maybe a home tab, and let's fill it in a different color. It's heat, uh, it's the wire's orange. So there it goes, it's changed. Text has changed, this has changed. Uh, and you can do that for each one of these wires. Select this one, what do you want this to look like? I want it to be, well, it's gonna be green. This wire is going to be whatever. And then you can, of course, change the, um, I should go purple, um, the text here in this little label. Um, I'll show you the is spacer. Now there might be, let's say this is a, a connector that has, again, five ports on it, but we're not using the fourth one. That, that's a blank one. No wires go into that. Uh, we, we just call that is spacer here because <laughs> we speak like robots when you're working in video. Is spacer, yes. Uh, so true, um, you can do that and we'll take it out of the, uh, the view there. Um, that's not the same as uh, deleting or dragging a wire. That's why we added this feature there for his spacer. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. You could accidentally at some point think you're dragging the whole shape, but you've actually selected a wire and drag that thing out of there. Um, don't worry, you can just drag it right back. Um, you, can, you can add and delete wires as well here though, um, via either a right click on the main shape, add wires or remove wires. Uh, it, it adds and removes at and from the end, just so you know. Um, or you can, uh, there's a little feature in here, I've got to get to it. Like, see that, when that little orange line appears? Let me get in here again. There's a little orange line, and down here, um, an arrow, a little blue arrow will appear. That will also insert a pinout wire shape. Um, I know that's real subtle and, and mouse hovering, but just know you can do that. Um, and then if you want to get rid of it, you can. So that's a pinout shape. Now, again, you may want to reuse this on future jobs. You can do that. Let's right click, go to details, pinout legends, convert pinout to master shape. Uh, we call it XYZ controller because that's what I named it. Uh, I may not want that. I may want to put something else in here. It's a six wire something. Now I'm at six wires. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to leave it as XYZ controller. Hit OK. This is creating a quick little custom shape for me in a, in a brand new stencil. So what happened over here is there's now something called custom pinout shapes. Yes, it has to be that name because we manually created that. We have to know where to look and we're looking here <laughs> and there's the XYZ controller for this. So, um, okay, hopefully that is clear. Uh, again, reusable. So if I go back here um, and, you know, D tools, pin out legends. Now, you notice I'm on the two end of this wire, right? Well, I can do another one. 
I can do another 2N. Um, so that hopefully will answer the question headed off at the pass here, that what if this wire is going to two different devices and there's different terminations on each one of those uh, terminal blocks on each device or screw downs or whatever you're calling it. Oh, cool, no problem. Well, that first one had six of my wires, apparently, because I ended up with six. Well, you know what? Yes, same page. I want the, uh, sorry, existing page. <laughs> Well, my pinout details, I need a new shape for four more wires. There's 10 total and four go to this device, six go to this device. I can do that. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I put that in the wrong field. Uh, this is gonna be, what was that, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, controller, something like that, just generic shape. But what I did wanna point out here to y'all that custom shapes now are available. I can reuse that shape, not in my example, um, or the existing shape that, um, is sitting here that's already in this project so this is from project this is from my fancy new stencil i created but i wanted to show you the example of creating another new shape so now it's pin out two it's on the pin out details page go to pin out details scroll out it dropped my pin out two right here so again i can customize this so um so yes you could have multiple and you're not limited to two if this connects to three devices slap on another one of those things that will let hopefully your installers or anybody in the field looking at this know what page to go to and see what the details are of this pinout. Um, so um, if you delete any one of these, we are going to remove the pinouts and we're going to remove them from multiple uh, everywhere they are. If we have that link. That's really the key of us having this pinout dash 01, whatever you decide to call that. If you decide to rename it, I don't like pinout. It's fan out. Okay, cool. Call it fan out. Um, change that here, but that's our reference that's going to take you back uh, and, and, and remove shapes as items get removed um, from the, the project here. Um, so hopefully that explains that well enough that, that that's the new feature here for showing the details of this. Uh, I do want to point out that you can do this for multiple wires at a time too. So once I create that first pinout, like this pinout one, remember that, my fancy little six wire dealie here? What if that's gonna represent, there's 30 other wires or 50 wires that, that I need to reference that to? Well, any wires on this page, let me just pull a few more over here to the page. For this example, I'll just do two. You can select multiple, you know, in Visio, you hold control down, you select multiple, this right click works for that. So D tools, uh, ah, pinout legends, there we go. <laughs> uh, this time I'm gonna do the from connection. I wanna mix it up. Uh, product details, it's gonna be a existing shape. This is XYZ controller. Notice it did that, it put my pinouts on multiple at a time. So you can do multiple at a time. So there's that. Um, now, last but not least, um, this is a little feature that we squeezed into this one. Let's go back to my plan view here. Um, this is to help you estimate wire lengths. We've had the request for years on this, probably since I've been with uh, D-Tools, which is a long, long time ago, um, to do something like this. And we, we decided to do that in this, this release. So we created a brand new shape for this called Wire Run. Um, so I have a floor plan in here. Uh, just a little things I want to point out about this. This only works in Visio. We don't have an AutoCAD option for this yet. Um, your floor plan needs to be to scale for this to really work. You're estimating wire. Uh, you probably want to scale drawing in there. Um, yes, I do feel compelled to point that out. Um, if you go to page setup here, um, your measurement units are the factor. Um, a lot of our pages by default will just be inches. Uh, well, on the non-metric ones, obviously, um, on, on the, the imperial ones. But if you come here, I can change the feet and inches or feet decimal. Um, now, of course, any of you that are using metric, um, it'll be whatever the default page, but you can change it in here. You want it in, um, you know, mile, oh, not miles, <laughs> centimeters, millimeters, meters. You get to choose what the actual uh, item displays. As you know, in our software, though, uh, our wire lengths are in feet or meters. So that, that's really your, your option. We're going to convert to feet or meters, <laughs> regardless of your setting here. Um, so go we'll feet and inches choose okay oh sorry and the other thing of course is, is the scale it's got to be the scale so this drawing scale is architectural quarter inch equals a foot good and that's what this is and of course um, there are ways for you to check your scale when it's in here it gets inserted into Visio. if you know um, standard size of a door if you know that these are three feet six inches or three feet whatever measure that pull a little tool over say oh yeah that is this is the scale so um, the, the shape under wire shapes 
there is now a little thing called a wire run. We um, oh, let's pull it over. It's a wire run. It is not linked to a product, as you can see. This shape just drops on the page, and it gives me a length on it. Um, so it, it it's pretty basic in that regard. But we did add some coding behind it. Now, let's say I want to run. I know this is your floor plan here. Let's say I need to run this wire. It's going to come from here. And it's going to end up uh, up here. So you can start off just by dragging this up there. Now this would be, uh, I would say this is my head end, I should say. This is my head end closet going to here. Now the one thing I do want to point out since I um, really was telling you earlier all about the ends of these wires, the two and the from, uh, this is not a wire. So we really doesn't matter. There's no to and from end here. All we're doing is getting a length. So if you happen to have the arrow down this way, it doesn't matter. This isn't a wire. It's just a measure. Uh, your actual wire shapes are the ones that matter when you decide to bring those over here. But um, you are able to take this shape and then show the path of this wire to try to estimate it. Like if we have to go um, you know, up here and then we need to go over here, for instance, we have to pull this part over here. Um, now, you can anywhere there's a midpoint, you can add a new midpoint. Hold shift down. When you, who knows if you all can see it, but in the middle of this, there's a blue dot right there. Um, hold shift down, and I can add another like rise in that if I need to. If it's, let's just say, well, there's a column you all can't see. It's up here. This is my path for this wire. I have to go through here, up around here, and it goes up this wall, over to here, but really, it's here. Um, and if you want to add a bend to, you know, let's make this even more complicated. Why not? Now I'm just having fun adding these things. There's what I'm doing with this wire for whatever reason. You guys have been up there. You know, you know what you deal with. Um, we have a length on this. So now it's 81 feet, six inches. Obviously this is two dimensional, right? Um, right. So what do you do about that? Well, this shape here, once you, you've got it to where you want it, and that's okay. That's my, my decent estimate of this. So right click option right here at the top says apply wire length. When you do this, we are going to list all of the wires in this project. Let me go over here. Um, well, bolt cables by default, if I'm not mistaken, but all the wires here. Um, and what you can see here is the wire length is calculated at 82. Yes, we're going to round this. Uh, it's 82 feet. Now, I can just type in the length I want to apply right here. I can say, oh, just make it uh, 83 feet, because that's how accurate I am. I figure I'm off by a foot. Um, no, you can either type that in, or you can add a contingency here. You can add a percentage or a whole number here. Um, if we go, oh, the, well, the wall height we know is 10 feet. Let's put a 20 here, because it's usually two walls, right? It's going up one, down another, or no, it's only going up one. Okay, great, 10 feet, um, if you want to add that in here. But this will allow you... To, this and then just manually typing this will allow you to modify the length that you're going to apply. Now, if you want to apply it to the existing wires in the job or some of them, you know, where is that? And how we got six wires that are going to run this and it's these. Oh, I happen to select six. That was, oh, five, dang. <laughs> six. And, and you would just say, you know, uh, apply the wire length. That's what you do. Or we'll let you uh, add new bulk wire from your catalog to this project. If of course, if you're still in the bidding stage and you're, you're actually adding wire, uh, we'll let you do that. So you can at least get an estimate there on your wire lengths. So, and then when you're done with this shape, once it, let's say, let's just apply the wire length there, updated for six wires, cool, uh, I'm done. I can delete this off the page if I want to. You can leave it on there as a reference too. Again, it's not the real wires, but now I might say, okay, well, now I need to get my device. So there's a device here and there's six wires. I'll come here, drag my device over, drag my six wires. And you know, our wires by default of this page do not stretch all this way. It will make a mess of your drawings if there's six wires run this way. Uh, we, we kind of pigtail them off of the shapes. Uh, I think everyone knows that on our standard plan view wire, it's a little arc that you just put there and it lists the head end of the wire. Um, but now you can at least get the length. So it's again, it's up to you whether you leave this uh, <laughs> across your drawing there. Um, certainly could if you want to have it there as a reference, but the real wires are what's going to matter here. Uh, but that allows you to do a measurement. And um, that really um, is my demonstration of these new features that we just popped out. You can go check out our release notes. You'll see some bug fixes in there too. Um, actually, there is one thing I will mention here to you without truly demonstrating it. It has to do with allowances in QuickBooks, so it's pretty specific. Um, we recently introduced allowances. 
right? V13. It's it's a way for you to add um, a, a placeholder value in a job before you actually add the real equipment and then be able to add that equipment later without affecting the price of the job. We've locked down this agreement. We're going to now add the real items. So little little redesign here. And as you can see, it's, we released this just a couple months ago and we're already listening to feedback from everyone on what is needed. Um, so one of the major things here that we did um, prior to this, once you created the item, we did not let you uh, change this use cost for us. Or actually, I, you, you were allowed to do that. But once you approved a project, even you couldn't do that. You no, you can't use this cost from items later in time. Well, what we noticed with that is when this was pre-checked out here, um, this is zero, and and you really don't get a very good uh, estimate on your on your true profit margin. This new method will allow you to use costs from items at any time, uh, even after the project's approved, where I want to put this into a project and I'm guessing my cost. I don't know. I'm guessing my price too. It's an allowance, but I'm going to guess that this will be my pro. I'm going to guess I'm going to make 25% margin on this for a good estimate on my um, uh, proposal that I'm trying to get accepted without all the details in there of what, what this allowance uh, true pricing is. Then the, the concept of these is you get the project approved, you get signed off, you're locked in 8,000. Then you're going to add the real items to the project, these items. Here, um, here's what's actually we're using, and then we show you the difference between here's what we put out there, here's what's actually in there. Um, but the problem was prior to this release is you couldn't then just decide at that point. You know, now I'd like to use the costs from the items that I've added here to replace this value with the true cost. Uh, this never changes because, like we said, that's the whole point of these. We locked down that price. Uh, but anyways, you can do this now. Um, so that's a big important feature because this plays into. The next feature, which is the ability to push these items to QuickBooks. When we initially released this a few months ago, all we would let you push to QuickBooks was the allowance itself. And that's when you sell the job, you create your estimate over in QuickBooks, and you push this over. Um, well, with, there's a problem with that in the fact that our users said, well, we can't push these items over. And then we're like, well, right, but the pricing is coming from the allowance, not the items, right? It's, it's all here, so so what's the big deal? Well, it turns out inventory tracking. <laughs> so it's like, oh, oh yeah, that. Um, so they still need the items to go over to an estimate, uh, regardless of whether it's pricing or not. We got to have these items here to properly track inventory. You know, when we're when we're uh, invoicing out of here, uh, out of QuickBooks. So we now will allow you to push those items. You know, even if uh, at any time, let's say that because the items are often added after the project's approved and you, you're now figuring it all out. These items can now be pushed to QuickBooks at any time. Um, now, key, some little caveats here. It's all based on this use cost from item setting, the one we now let you toggle any time. Um, if I initially had this box unchecked, well, we're just going to use this cost and this price when we push that allowance over uh, to QuickBooks the first time. That's what goes in your estimate. If you then check this box at some point and add some items to this and go to push those items to QuickBooks, um, we'll, we'll push the cost over for you, but not the price of the items. That's still going to affect that estimate, assuming you're adding to an existing estimate because, wait a minute, I had 6000 there before. You will need to make manual adjustments in QuickBooks. We don't know what you've done with that value since we pushed it. There was no way around that, uh, but we wanted to give you guys the flexibility for that. Now, if this box stays unchecked, nope, no matter what, it's 6000 and 8000 over in QuickBooks. I'm not changing that over there. Maybe I'll, you know, I have another way I'm going to chew my job costing. I'm not doing it in QuickBooks. I've got six and eight over there. Um, as long as this box is unchecked, we will still push these items or you have the option of pushing these items over to QuickBooks, um, but we will ignore both the cost and the price. The price is always ignored, but the cost will be the option. If this is checked, the cost of the items will go over. If it's not, they won't. I guess I could have said that up front. Yeah, yeah that, that sums it up right there. <laughs> when checked, <laughs> the cost goes over. Um, so Hopefully, uh, y'all just give that, a, give that a try when you're taking a look at this. That's a little feature we added, and like I said, we give you the flexibility to change that. Um, so those are the major uh, changes I want to talk about. Uh, you can check out our release notes online. I know we hit a little over time. I apologize for that. Uh, Tim tends to get wordy in the beginning of these. Uh, this is totally not my fault. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you all for attending. We'll see, Tim, how you would like to um, see if there's any Q&A here.